Joining me now to discuss, Ed Yardeni. He's the president of Yardeni Research. Good to see you. Welcome back. Thank you very much. I'll just ask you first for your thoughts on, on what's happening here. Well, the CPI was a great report. Um, you know, I'm a big uh, believer that you should always take out wasn't what doesn't support your story. And if you take out shelter from the CPI, it was up like 1.5%. If you take out food, energy, and shelter, it was up 2%. So we've already got inflation pretty close to where the Fed wants it. They actually wanted a 2%. So we just have to wait uh, patiently here. But uh, shelter inflation is definitely coming down. I think the market read it the right way. And I think this rally is going to continue. My year-end target is 4,600, and it's turning out to be too conservative the way things are going. And I think if we if we actually go up to 4,600, that's actually a breakout, uh, which could set us up for a good rally into early next year. You mentioned stories, um, the bear story. Can we mm -hmm. say it's dead, or is it too early? I've said it's dead for a long time. I mean, I thought October 12th was the low. I even thought that the bear market uh, wasn't going to be long sustainable uh, but uh, I think the bear the bear story requires a recession as you said Scott and it's hard to see a recession out there uh, with the economy uh, continuing to grow quite well in the face of what has been a, a very significant increase in interest rates the economy is resilient that's really the bottom line of it the consumer is resilient and as long as the labor market continues to show lots of job openings I don't think we have to worry about a recession and I think that takes away from the bear story. And now with this uh, rally in, uh, with, with interest rates coming down, that helps on the valuation side. You know, the third quarter earnings uh, re reporting season is just about over. And uh, the uh, result is going to be that uh, earnings just rose to a record high. So all very impressive. Right. But I mean, you could you could say, couldn't you, that, OK, the economy remains resilient. I, I'll give you that. Um, okay, but what thanks. happens if rates remain, remain elevated? Right, that the I Fed is just fine. not go Fed's not going to cut, right? right? Because Powell doesn't want to be Arthur Burns. So, mm -hmm. what 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 happens when you put still resilient economy yeah. with still elevated rates, one plus one? What does that equal right. for the stock market? Well, I, 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 in my forecast, I don't really have to have interest rates come down sig significantly. I think uh, you know it's always everybody wants to be a contrarian and bet against the Fed. I've actually been betting on the Fed that the Fed's going to get it right. And uh, right now they're talking about two rate cuts, 50 basis points next year. I think that's very reasonable, and I think the economy can live uh, with uh, with these levels of interest rates. It's already proven that it can do that. Uh, I think if rates stay here, it would really be a, an indication that uh, the economy is actually pretty doing pretty well. And rates at these levels are a real windfall for uh, fixed income investors. That's one of the reasons, by the way, that uh, high interest rates haven't been all that uh, negative, because there's a lot of people who were basically suffering when interest rates were close to zero, and now they're getting quite a windfall in net interest income. You think we get people to move out of cash and into equities, and if so, when? Well, I think, as you mentioned before, it's, it's not a, essential that that happens. Uh, there's, uh, there, there is a lot of cash out there, uh, and it may not take that much to, to move the market higher. But, uh, yeah, I think the market could very well convince some people that they've got uh, a misallocation in their asset portfolio, too much cash, and not enough in bonds and stocks. Yeah, one day also doesn't make a, you know, doesn't no. a broadening make. You know, I'm looking at the Russell. I, I, I've just been astounded by the move today. Right. It's up 5.15 percent. You need some level of sustainability behind that before you can declare this still, yeah. um, you know, a, a broadening market, right? Right. Well, I'm, I'm not a technician, but technicians certainly must be marveling at today's action and the action really since October 27th when the uh, correction was over. We had a this has been a classic uh, bull market since October uh, 12th. Uh, this is the third year of an election year and uh, that's uh, usually a very good year. Uh, we had an amazingly strong January barometer at the beginning of the year. We had a weak September and October and now we're getting a very strong November. I think we're already in the Santa Claus rally, and uh, it may surprise even the optimists like myself. But I mean, it's not like earnings were fabulous, right? I mean, they are, they are somewhat lackluster, and maybe the projections for next year, given lag effects and the like, are, are still a little too elevated. No, I think they're, they're quite good. I mean, as I said, uh, we're talking about record earnings in the third quarter, and I, I know that analysts have been uh, shaving down their estimates for the fourth quarter because they've been getting some cautious uh, guidance 
from companies, but companies have to do that in the kind of environment we're in. Um, you know, as, as an economist, as a forecaster, I think uh, uh, next year is going to be a better year, and I think earnings are going to be strong. Look, Scott, I've been at the top end of forecasters on earnings. I thought 225 this year, 250 next year, and 270 for uh, 2025. And uh, I've been saying that for over a year, and for over a year I've been kind of wondering whether I should lower it. And I haven't because the economy continued to perform pretty well as I thought. It was actually... Again, everything has been working out better than optimists like myself have been thinking. I mean, yeah. three-quarter economic growth was fantastic. I wobbled a little bit uh, the f last time I was with you. I thought, well, maybe we'll get to 4,400. <laughs> and now all of a sudden I'm back to saying, no, no, yeah. I'm probably going to see 4,600. Like, today or no, you know, not today, but the next few days is quite possible.